Can you imagine what it would be like to see the world in the dark? It will probably seem like a terrible idea to you, and it will scare you because we all want to see what we have in front of us. To be able to look into the eyes of who is talking to us, to distinguish between a kind and an angry face, or to know when someone looks at us with or without love. But what if such visual perception was denied to us? In that case, we would likely adapt and develop alternative methods for navigating the world, ensuring we don't feel disoriented. The real question, however, is whether the world would be capable of perceiving us without preconceived judgments. Viola Miller was 62 years old and had been blind for more than 40 years. However, her life was not always like this, and before the tragic accident that condemned her to live in eternal darkness, Miller had a very good life and a bright future ahead of her. Born and raised in the sunny city of San Diego, California, Viola was the only daughter of a married couple of craftsmen who were dedicated to the artisanal manufacture of surfboards and small fishing boats. It was a common trait in the area that allowed them to have a good quality of life and at the same time enjoy one of the best climates and landscapes of the entire West Coast. Viola loved the sea, was a great lover of surfing, and was perfect at getting on the board and dancing on the waves. Similarly, Miller was always very drawn to her parents' craft. She could spend hours watching them work wood without tiring and soon learned everything she needed to start making her own boards and helping them in the workshop. However, she could not be both, and it was clear to her that at that time, when the time came, she would have to choose and dedicate her life to one thing only. Someday you'll have to choose, honey. You know that, don't you? Our craft is beautiful and I know you love it, but I also know how much you love the sea and how much you love getting on your surfing. You're little now and can do both without compromise, but in a few years that won't be the case. I'm afraid that when that time comes, you'll have to make a choice." Her worried mother told her when Viola was only 15 years old and didn't know what her future would be. However, for Miller, this decision was not as difficult as her parents thought, and when the time came to choose her path, she had no doubts. As the years went by, her passion for surfing grew and her talent for catching waves became more than evident. So when she turned 18 and finished high school, Viola was very clear about what her goal in life would be. She would be an elite athlete and would fight to become one of the best surfers in the world. Unfortunately, fate had other plans, and at the age of 21, while Viola and her parents were returning home from a surfing competition at Solana Beach, a competition that Viola had won, they suffered a terrible accident that ended the couple's life and left the young woman in a coma. Viola took weeks to wake up due to the severity of her injuries. Doctors said it was practically a miracle that she managed to survive. The accident occurred on a sharp curve where accidents were common, although none had been as serious as the Millers. They fell 200 meters down the hill until the car hit a large rock. Viola's parents died instantly, but she managed nobody knows how to cling to life. Firefighters managed to pull her body out of the wreckage, but by the time she reached the hospital, doctors had little hope of saving her life. However, when Viola managed to wake up, the doctors realized something was wrong. She was suffering from irreversible blindness. The brain injuries sustained during the accident were very severe, and while she was in a coma and her body was recovering, it was impossible to know its extent. Unfortunately, the doctors' worst fears were realized when Viola opened her eyes in panic. I can't see anything. Why can't I see anything? Where are my parents? Why won't anyone tell me anything? Help, my head hurts so much!" cried Miller desperately a few minutes after regaining consciousness and realizing what had happened to her. After the accident, Viola Miller's life was never the same. It took her a long time to accept the death of her parents, but above all, she needed a lot of psychological help to learn to accept her new condition as a blind person. For someone like her, an energetic elite athlete who loved spending hours in the sea, living deprived of all those sensations and the possibility of seeing the blue of the water again was a real nightmare. It was many years before Viola smiled again. The road to healing and peace with herself was not easy, nor was it short, and she did not have to walk it alone. She had a lot of help in the company of the people who loved her most. After the accident, Viola was left without family in San Diego. The only living relatives she had left were in New Jersey. She moved there months after the accident where she began her recovery process in the company of her aunt Zora and her husband Matt. There she managed to start a new life away from everything she had loved until then. Viola rebuilt herself through therapy, but mostly through the company of others who, like her, had lost everything and found themselves completely lost after losing their sight dramatically. She spent several years studying Braille to be able to communicate and become more independent, and once she succeeded, she trained as a physiotherapist, specializing in sports injuries and treatments. It was her way of getting back in touch with the world of sport, because although she had been offered numerous occasions to train becoming a swimmer in the blind category, she always refused. For me, the sport as I knew it is over. It hurts too much to feel the smell of the sea and not be able to go into it, not to be able to see its wonderful blue color during a sunset, nor to appreciate the immensity of nuances that its interior contains every time I dive. I've accepted it, and now my mission is to help others to recover so that they can continue to achieve their goals. That's what makes me happy now explained Viola to everyone who asked her about her passion for the sport and her decision not to return to it. 
and she actually managed to make that make her happy. Or at least she was trying to. Miller never went back in the water, but that didn't mean she didn't want to keep fit. One of her new hobbies after going blind was walking. Taking long walks around the city became her new way to escape the monotony and exercise her body. She could do it for hours, walking up and down the city, exploring every nook and cranny and returning to the places where she felt best. At first, for the first 10 years after the accident, Miller used a cane to guide her. But over the years, she stopped using it because she said it made her look too old and she didn't want others to feel sorry for her. She liked to feel free and independent, even though on numerous occasions it was more than obvious that she had lost her way and needed the cane so she wouldn't end up falling to the ground. Although she would never admit it, Viola was too proud for it. You have to let yourself be helped, Viola. Asking for help won't make you weaker, and if they help you, you don't have to think it's because they feel sorry for you. Wouldn't you want to help someone who's in trouble? If you see a blind person lost, wouldn't you help them find their way home? You already know the answer, and you don't do it out of pity but out of solidarity. To help is to empathize with the suffering of others. No one who's willing to reach out to you will feel superior to you. Don't forget that, okay? Her aunt Zora would tell her on numerous occasions when Miller refused to receive help or carry her guide came through the streets of the big city. Viola had many ups and downs throughout her life, but she made an effort to follow her aunt's advice and become a more sociable person. Sometimes she succeeded, sometimes not so much. However, she never gave up and managed to lead a fairly normal life despite her blindness and multiple complexes. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these real-life stories every day. Now, back to the story. As the years went by, Miller's health began to have some problems that caused her insecurities to resurface. At 62, she was suffering from severe diabetes and suffered from constant high and low blood sugar levels that prevented her from leading a normal life. Doctors advised her to rest and to avoid heavy exertion, especially when she had a crisis and her blood sugar levels were very unbalanced. At first, Viola listened to them, stopped working as a physiotherapist, and limited the distance of her walks. But with time and regular use of medication, she began to feel better and regained her usual rhythm. However, even though the medication worked and she felt at 100% strength, the diabetes never went away, and from time to time and without warning, Viola would suffer an unexpected crisis that left her very dazed and weak, throwing away all her plans and self-confidence. And it was precisely in one of those unexpected crises when our protagonist was lucky enough to meet a person who would make her realize how wrong she was about life. A man she would probably never hear from again, but whom she could never forget, and who would make her reconcile with her past and her fears. It all started one day on a Wednesday in April 2021. Viola was feeling well. She had not suffered any relapse for weeks, and it was a beautiful spring day that invited her to go out and walk the streets, and that's what she did. Against the advice of her doctor and her aunt, Miller went for an aimless walk in sunny New Jersey that morning. She was not carrying a cane as was her custom, so it didn't take her long to become disoriented and end up in the least expected place. A gigantic place, and the least recommended for a blind person with a tendency to suffer from low blood sugar, the New Jersey train station. It was not the first time Viola had been there, but the previous time she had always been accompanied by someone who could guide her through the crowd. But that day she was alone, and after spending more than half an hour walking through the station, she began to suffer a sugar crisis that made her feel very dizzy. She was aware that she shouldn't be there, but there was no turning back. She knew she needed to stabilize her sugar levels, and the best way to do was to eat something sweet, like a donut and a cup of coffee with lots of sugar. That would make her feel much better, but she had no idea where the station's cafeteria was located, so she had no choice but to seek help. Against her wishes, Viola walked through the station until she reached one of the exits, where she knew that there was always an employee there to check capacity and security, so she approached him and asked for help. Unfortunately, her first attempt was unsuccessful, and she received the worst response that someone in her condition could hear. You think I have time to go around helping blind people find the cafeteria? That's not my job, ma'am. And now if you don't mind, I have a lot of things to do. A person like you shouldn't be wandering around these places alone, was the cold and cruel answer the train security employee gave her. Holding back the urge to cry and feeling more and more dizzy, Viola retraced her steps and tried to find the cafeteria by her own means. An impossible mission, of course, that is, if it weren't for the unexpected intervention of a kind and brave man she would never have been able to accomplish. Viola had stopped in the middle of the station to try to regain her balance when suddenly she heard him. Good morning, ma'am. Can I help you? My name's Sean Gallagher and I'm a policeman. I'm here to help you with whatever you need. A man's voice said in a friendly tone and raising his voice a little so she could hear him well among the noise of the crowd. Hold on to my arm, don't be afraid, said the sweet voice, brushing her hand gently against his arm. Viola instinctively clung to him so as not to fall, and then without knowing why, she began to cry and explain to him what had happened to her. I'm very sorry for what happened to you, ma'am. I find it totally unfair that there are still people like that in the world. That clerk should be fired immediately for the way he treated you. The policeman was really upset by what Viola told him about the station clerk and offered his help in finding the coffee shop. Don't worry, I'll take you. Keep holding onto my arm and I'll guide you to the station's cafeteria. It's nearby. Sean looked at her with some pity. 
She really seemed to be very lonely and disoriented. Oh, you're a gentleman of those that are no longer left. You don't have to get angry, it's no use. I've been blind for over 40 years and in all that time I've met all kinds of people. Some really unpleasant ones that I'd rather never had had to meet. Being blind's not a nice thing, you know. You never know who's really being honest with you and that makes you distrustful and lonely. It's hard to trust again when you can't tell right from wrong. I've been trying for half my life and still haven't succeeded. Miller confessed to the policemen as they walked through the crowd in search of the central cafeteria. I don't know you and you don't know me, but here we are. Two strangers in a train station helping each other without prejudice and certainly without expecting anything in return. I'm a cop, been one all my life, and believe me, trust is in short supply in my line of work. But I don't lose faith. I focus on the good in my life, on those I care about and those who care for me in the same way I do. It's the only thing that matters and the reason I keep getting up every morning to protect others. You should do the same, the officer suggested tenderly. Miller listened to him very attentively. The words of this strange and helpless man managed to move her. In his voice, there was a certain tone of melancholy and sadness that Viola couldn't overlook. The law enforcement officer escorted Viola to the coffee shop where she was able to get the coffee she so desperately needed, and then took her to the Dunkin' Donuts next door to make sure she also ate something sweet to increase her blood sugar and take away the dizziness. With a mission accomplished, the agent proceeded to say goodbye to continue making his rounds, but first Viola wanted to thank Gallagher for helping her. Before you go, I'd like you to know that what you've just done is above and beyond your duties as a police officer. What you've done today in helping me, you've done because you're an extraordinary human being, I'm sure of that. I can't see you, but I don't need to in order to recognize the goodness in you, Sean Gallagher. I wish you the best of luck. You deserve it." And she said goodbye to him. Viola felt much better after lunch and decided to call her on to pick her up and take her home. However, what happened that morning at the station was far more far-reaching than they could have ever imagined. Just two days after their encounter at the train station, it came to light that an anonymous commuter had managed to record everything that happened with a blind woman and sent it directly to the police department where Sean Gallagher worked for them to release and congratulate him. The New Jersey Transit Police, NJPDD, was proud to show how one of its members touchingly helped a blind woman who was stranded at a commuter station and escorted her to get a glass of hot coffee and a chocolate donut. Along with the NGTPD's posting of the photographs, the department wanted to publicly commend its employee for his kindness and service to the community. We share this act of kindness as a great reminder that even a small gesture can make a positive difference in someone's life. NJTPD captioned its release. The success of the publication was so great that the station employee, who refused to help Viola, decided to show his face and apologize publicly through the publication. The networks burned, criticizing the employee's lack of humanity, while others applauded him for showing his face and admitting his mistake. Viola hated social media, so she never knew the extent of her chance encounter with a kindly policeman Gallagher. However, she would never forget what that man did for her that morning, nor the sage advice he gave her at a time when she was feeling truly vulnerable. The law enforcement officer proved that a little kindness goes a lot further than arrogance and hatred. With his disinterest and empathy, Sean showed us that a more understanding society is at the same time a safer world. While Viola, with her willpower and courage, shows us that in life there are always second chances, even for those who have lost everything. I hope we can remember that more often. Did you like this touching and surprising story? If so, we invite you to leave us a comment expressing your opinion. If you want to continue enjoying inspiring stories like this one, subscribe to our channel or check out the other videos shown at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for your cooperation.